Brian Dressel with me as always is Jonathan Hardesty. Howdy. Uh, Chewy cannot make it this week because uh, Chewy's show is wrapping up and that means that she has to work pretty much every day straight for about three weeks straight. So she's a little tired. <laughs> so she's going to take a nap as opposed to uh, try to uh, make some sense out of the fucking nonsense we watched. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I was ready so- for I was ready for nonsense, but I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then like you're halfway through, like, all right, I guess I get this nonsense. And then uh, a glam rock song starts while a girl is raped in a bag, and it's like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, this is this is a month of oh, this is surprising. Yeah, oh, oh. this is surprising. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th- that's Sion Sana month. Didn't see that coming. And I'd say that as a fan of his. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, <laughs> it's- so I, I know last week we always said that, or we all said that we're going to watch Guilty of Romance, and just a little bit of preamble before we get started on today's movie of Suicide Club. Um, basically, Guilty of Romance exists in two forms. There's an international version and a uh, Japanese version. The international version cuts out about 33 to 35 minutes, and apparently Sion Sono has said that that uh, ruins the experience, which sounds pretty bad to me, and that's the only version that's available digitally. And as I've mentioned a few times, I own the Blu-ray, so I have the Japanese version, and I'm going to watch the Japanese version, and then I'm going to drive the disc to John's house so he can watch the Japanese version, and then we'll do an episode on Guilty of Romance, which unfortunately this means Land. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately well, yeah. that means uh, Land of Hope. It might just end up being a where have they been doing? Right. It's weird. This month has been the month of this movie is going to be hard to watch. Not because of the subject matter, which too can be hard to watch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, good luck finding it. They didn't have, they only had SD, SD copy on, uh, on this, on the console. I think Amazon it was. Uh, yep. Yep. That's where I watched it. $4 SD. And it was like, ah, this is so fuzzy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that stings for SD, <laughs> but you know, we watched it. Yeah. Uh, so that being guilty of romance, uh, tune in next week for that. I very much still look forward to watching it, uh, and we will watch it. Chewie might be on next week, but she also might not because again, we are in that three weeks of her working pretty much nonstop. So she might have to bow out. Um, we might try to replace her with somebody else if that happens. We might not because that means I'm going to have to drive the disc to yet a third house. So we might not, (laughs) but we'll see. (laughs) You're just going to be busy that week driving, (laughs) driving the movie to everywhere. As if I'm not busy enough already. Um, so <laughs> You pull up on Matt's uh, doorstep and be like, I just traveled a long way to get you. You have this disc. No anymore. idea how hard it was to get here. Watch this. Oh, it's region locked. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be a bad day. Um, so it's probably just be John and I again next week. Unless Chewie somehow can find the strength to record as well as working 21 days straight. So uh, it'll be up to her. Um yeah. But that said, so since we had to change gears, I figured it'd be best to let's just dial it back. Let's the Suicide Club was the one that was kind of on the chopping block. It was either this or another film, and since one didn't work out, I figured we should do Suicide Club. That's the one that got him Western knowledge or Western. Uh, that's the one that got him Western renown. Uh, it kind of made him a little bit more of a thing. Obviously, springboarded his career into much more uh, like prolific almost filmmaking. Because before that, he was kind of doing like borderline softcore pornish movies. And now he did this one, and then his career just, and just took off. Um, <laughs> he was doing softcore before this? Who? What? No. This guy? No way. Uh, no way. That's a surprise. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> shocked, I tell you. Yeah. yeah. You, you go to like his early movies on IMDb and you look at some of the covers. I'm like, huh. I guess I won't look that one up. <laughs> um,. But yeah, so then he made this movie, and this movie obviously did very well. This one has a huge cult following. Still to this day, people love the shit out of it. Other people think it's garbage. I've even done some reviews that say no one could like this movie. It's unfinished. Like, there's clearly just an hour of movie missing because there's characters that come in out of nowhere. There's no reasons why some people should know who other people are. It's a mess. And 
here I am sitting in 2021, having just watched it last night for the first time since probably my sophomore year of high school. Like, that's how long ago I, I watched this movie. Uh-huh. I remembered virtually none of it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think it's that bad. I'm pretty sure it's finished. And I also think it's the worst movie that I've seen of his. Yeah, that seems fair. And I also think that in high school, I would have eaten this shit up completely. I, I, like. I, I can't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure the 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 glam rock rape scene is where I turned it off. I was watching it with friends and stuff, and I just don't think I was into it. And I think it got to that point. And I'm like, this is just too much, man. Like, holy fuck. And I think yeah, we no, that was out. rough. That, that was, was rough. Rough. But, but like the glam rock part, the the weirdness, the the children in the theater. Like, there's a lot of elements that would have been like my my high school self needing something edgy. From being in the you know living in the country, yeah, very kind of white bread farmland. It's just like this would have helped me escape into some very weird places. And I was oh like, yeah, okay. It has all the ingredients for it. So watching it now with what you just said, it's like, ugh, yeah. There's the bowling alley rape scene. That's glam oh rock. My God, that that's scene just... is so fucking weird. And it just kind of like it just brings the movie to a screeching halt just to watch this monstrosity of a scene. But we're getting yeah. ahead of ourselves. Let, let, let's kind of let's set the, uh, the the pace for this movie. Uh, so, Suicide Club is a movie that came out in two thousand one. Uh, it kind of capitalized on uh, the Western appeal of like J horror films, even though this one is definitely not a horror film. At least I don't think so. Um, it just kind of capitalized on like people are really hungry for Japanese entertainment and specifically horror films. So this one found an audience really fast, and it obviously gravitated towards like certain people. Um, the movie takes place. I'll give a very, very quick breakdown because trying to follow the plot of this thing is surprisingly difficult while also being very straightforward. Um, kind of a theme for this month. Uh, it's basically there is a, a – correct me if you think I'm getting this wrong. There is a J-pop band out there that is subliminally sending messages to people to kill themselves – and it's working fucking fantastically as people are just or like a, the movie opens with a group of 50 girls, I think, throwing themselves on the train track and it's getting popped like fucking Gallagher's watermelons. Um, yes. And then I uh, like some nurses commit suicide and then cops started trying to investigate this whole thing. of like, what the fuck's going on? Like, why do people keep killing themselves? Like, well, we can't do any criminal charges. They're killing themselves, not other people. And except for like one kid who was thrown off the roof by the girl who wanted him to kill himself and he wouldn't do it. So she chucked him. I was like, well, that's murder. Um, but for the most part, it's all suicide. And uh, basically after a while, the cops are like, no, we can't. It's not crime. And then I don't remember exactly the tipping point that made them realize it was crime. The cop's son killed himself and possibly his whole family. Yeah. It's a, I think the family's death is alluded to, but not yeah, shown. You only see the son because he had the tattoo. Um and then after that, like, okay, this is clearly a crime. Somebody is making people do this. And some guy, uh, he goes by the name Genesis. He's the glam rock guy we kept talking about at the beginning. Uh, he tries to take credit for all of it, even though it wasn't him necessarily, but also might have been. The movie gets a little muddled. Um, and basically yeah. the movie ends with the the band saying that this is the last time we're ever going to perform this song. And like 500 girls are supposed to kill themselves. And the cop who's been trying to chase him down tracks down one girl who's definitely going to kill herself. He's like, don't do it. And she's like, I was never going to. And she gets on a train and drives away. And that's just kind of how yep. it ends. And yep. it's like, <laughs> oh, and I forgot uh, skin fruit roll-ups. Um, uh, <laughs> I forget oh, yeah, skin yeah, fruit that, roll-ups. The grossest Cinnabon you've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck you ever eating those again. Like we, I have watched just horrifying things. All month long, uh, with Tokyo Vampire Hotel, <laughs> Tokyo <laughs> yes. Tribe, yes. fucking tag, like just yes. horrifying things, and I don't think any of it will scar me the way skin fruit roll ups did. <laughs> that was pretty gross because they they they, oh. they, lead, they lead you to that. They lead up to it for quite a while. You don't actually see it. You just see everyone's reaction, and it's like, well, what could be so bad that they're showing up? And they show it, and you're like, oh, that's that bad. <sighs> I'm gonna put down my I'm gonna put down my evening snack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put that aside, push that aside, and uh, get some water just to uh, maybe some <laughs> tums, you know. Yeah, soothe the upset stomach that has just happened from what I've seen. Like, and they peel it apart twice in the movie. Yeah, the skin fruit roll up, and it's got the elasticity and the, the sloppy thloppness that yep. uh, when you pull it apart, that um, 
I mean, props to the props department for that. <laughs> oh, and this movie is made on like a zero budget. They they translate it to about two hundred fifty thousand dollars American. So whatever that is in um, yen. Uh, so it's made up for like fucking nothing. And man, that skin roll looked le- well. The first one looked legit. The second one looked a little cheaper for some reason. But the first one that looked like a chunk of skin, like just a big old roll of skin. Yeah. And like I don't think we're doing enough justice. It's six inch patches. Six inches is not that long. And this thing yeah. is like, I don't know, five hundred feet long. Like this thing is huge. Yeah. And it's just patches of skin just rolled in this one thing that looks like it'd weigh like twenty or thirty pounds. Just a heavy, wet pile of skin. Yep. It's yep. so fucking gross. <laughs> well, and and I have like a, a direct like understanding what that look like feels like because you get like hot dogs from the grocery store and they've got yeah. the hot dog juice in the bottom that just kind of chills in the corner yeah. like it did in this movie. I know that smell of the hot dog juice. And I, like there's a direct like it grossed me out because I could actually imagine this. And to make it worse, the punchline to the fruit the skin roll up is how they do it. They use a wood carver with the the, the strips that just slide yeah. them down their back. And oh. I know I've seen those work on wood and it's like so I know what that's like. Yeah, I can imagine it, it perfectly, and wow, how horrible! It just makes you so uncomfortable, and it, and the problem is, it's like it's one of those things that's just so fucking gross, like just so fucking gross that you're like, I hope it at least makes sense, like at least just make it not just a gross thing to upset me. And then when you finally figure out what they're doing, and it it turns out that there there is no suicide club, like that is like the message of the movie. There is no suicide club. There's a subliminal message, but people are just killing themselves. We're just giving them a slight nudge. There's no club. There's no conspiracy. There's nothing. They're just fucking doing it. Um, yeah. Which is that is why I think the movie falls into the horror realm of like, no, nope, there's no suicide club. We're we're not doing anything. We're giving people the idea they're doing it, um, which is fucking crazy. But what does that have to do with rolls of skin? Like nothing whatsoever. So like, if you crack the code behind this band where they have a poster where they're all wearing numbered jerseys and holding up the right number of fingers and somehow you're supposed to know that that means to dial that on your phone, like texting, it's a big leap, but apparently enough people do it. You get to go to a secret concert where you'll get to meet a bunch of children who will ask you if you are attached to yourself, as in, would you mourn yourself if you died? Um, and however you answer that question means that you're either in the not club because it's not a club, but you're in it now, which means that you get to go give them a chunk of your skin and then at some point kill yourself. Like, am I wrong? Is that what happened? <laughs> I mean, that's the read I got off of it. And, and yeah, it, it's the movie is another one of those movies that we talk about all the time. I'm just like time for interpretation and yeah. yours will probably be right. And then other people's will be probably right because it almost doesn't matter, uh, especially since the ending is she doesn't jump on the tr- jump jump on the tracks, even yeah. though she had the skin pulled off. So like, so she didn't. But there's never any, there's no idea that she won't, right? You just don't know. And, and I, uh, I think... the, the movie is like, yeah, you're never gonna know. There's no club. Yeah, like, it, I, I... <laughs> they're not brainwashed. There is no club. These are people just killing themselves, and that that's what's supposed to be scary about it. But it also like th- like that itself doesn't work because, but then why did the nurse just fucking kill herself? Like the nurse literally just says "see ya" and just happily jumps out the window. Yeah. Like there's things that so, just don't quite click, and that, that that's kind of where I want to want to go for basically the majority of this episode because I'm not sure how much the movie there really is to talk about. But talking about Young Sion Sono and like where he went from here, I think is fascinating because. You can see, like, this is so clearly the same guy who made Tokyo Tribe and Tag. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is his first major outing, but holy shit, is it the same guy? Like, he had so much of his stuff, like, ready to go from from the very beginning. Like, especially, like, the bold opening. Every one of his movies we've watched so far has had an opening that just made your jaw drop. Yep, your and, jaw and he, drop, your skin crawl. It's yep. just... And he was still doing it here. And it still worked surprisingly well fucking what 20 years after the movie came out uh yeah t- almost <laughs> 2001 2021 yeah yeah still works very well yeah and it's interesting watching this especially since it's earlier on in his his filmography because uh the previous ones we've watched have all had that um a very biting 
punctuation at the end. Yeah. And I, I think whether or not the pieces all line up or work in this one, he's toying with that same thing here. If maybe the the reason why this one would be more biting is because when you put it on paper and think about it, like all these people are just killing themselves for no reason and you're not going to stop it and you're not going to be able to catch it. Like that's a powerful thing to say in the movie. Yep. Yeah, for and, sure. But it's also like, it doesn't have the bite or the punch as um, last week's Tokyo tribe was like, it's about penis. Yeah. Envy. Like, or not so much penis envy, but it's, it's about, yeah. Inferiority like male complex. fragility, inferiority complexes. Yeah. Like, yeah. So this one is almost, he's almost, he's jumping out the gate, like scary. Like that's a scary thought, but not a punch, like a biting thought. You have to, you have to spend some time in this movie to get there. Cause there's and, a lot of details in here that are, are, they're making you try to solve it. Which I guess is an indictment because the media is always trying to solve what they would consider senseless death, right? And yeah, the, I mean that's kind of the, the point of the the police in this movie, and I, I think kind of like the 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 whole. I, I guess we should just talk about the the idea of what Sionsano has said about this film, and you and I both found this in like various different articles. It's a very popular thing that he said. Uh, basically, when somebody asked him about the movie, he said, "I hope Japanese hate me. This is a hate movie." I almost, uh, I hope almost all people hate this movie. This title is Suicide Club, so I made it. Yes, and truly, every Japanese person hates it. And it's like, <laughs> I, I think there's something there, and like maybe, maybe it's not not the bite at the end or the lack of a bite at the end. But I think there's just something very, very Japanese in this film that's just possibly going right over our Western heads. Because like there there is a a major thing with suicide in Japanese cultures like I've you know I've I've read about the the forest that people go to kill themselves in like it's it's a very different world it's a very different approach to this and I know there's a problem with a lot of young people taking their lives and I have a feeling obviously not I have a feeling I can tell this movie is made as a as a commentary on that and it seems that the commentary is they're gonna keep fucking doing it we need to fix something else. Like, you're not going to be able to solve it. There's no grand murder mystery. There's no grand murderer. There's nothing huge that is out there to fix. We need to fix the kids themselves. Yeah. So, like, the, the only thing I can project onto it is the way he's treating the suicide in this in this movie and the subject matter with the cultural element of the young Japanese kids killing themselves is the way we treat the gun violence in schools. Like, sure. So if you take a, you know, like, it's not an exact comparison at all. But, like, if you do, like, a we need to talk about Kevin, the school shooting, and then this to uh, suicide in Japanese culture, I can see where this isn't going to sit well with the people that it's made, like, in the, pl- the place where it's made, right? Yeah, because, like, say, if we want to compare to talk about Kevin, we need to talk about Kevin is very much like a horror show of, like, can you believe how real this is? <coughs> how easily this could happen to you? And Suicide Club is far more of, fuck you, it's happening. Like, the movie... Right. It, it, I, I laughed out loud when the kids died in the beginning of the film, which says probably something horrible about me. But at the same time, it starts with very like comical, upbeat music. Everything's just really cheery until they all just start dying. Like clearly, there is some, there's a comedic edge to this film. Like he, there is a lot oh, of yeah. anger behind this thing, and it's you know, a lot of anger comes out in comedy. That's kind of how it works. And I, and a lot of these yep. tones and feelings, I think, are all up there on the screen. I just don't think his his hand was quite as uh, um, accomplished as it was now, or as it is now. It was just right. a little more rough around the edges. It it is always a weird thing to because um, he bookends the movie with uh, that pop, the J pop band. Yeah, um, and it's just like having that music, that upbeat music, with such a horrible thing in the beginning, just plays with the tone. And um, you know, if for people who don't like it here in the states, we have a Generally, generally, I'm going to generalize about our country, the U.S. of A. We have a harder time with mixed tonality, especially tones that are at odds. Yeah. So when things bounce around, that gets harder to hold on to. Like you're holding on to one tone that the movie's going to take, and that's your grounding. But even with um, stuff we've watched like uh, The Host or um, oh, even Sono's uh, Why Don't You Play in Hell, right? Yeah. Like tones like all over the place and it works, but it is abrasive. So to have a, a an earlier take, an earlier form of this, yeah, no, <laughs> I can see why the hate appears. Yeah, in in commentary for it. 
because it wants you to hate it, like he said. Like, I can see it. Every every decision in this movie is like, I want you to hate this. Yeah, it, it's kind of like a... Uh, going back to your example about gun violence, where we just kind of gotten to a point now where... What was it? Like the... Not last year, because last year everybody's home. But like the year before that, there was more school shootings than days in a year. Like, it's just like, holy yeah. shit, this is, there's just so many. And it's gotten to the point where most Americans just kind of ignore it. it doesn't even hit the news anymore unless you like a certain amount of children or uh teenagers are murdered it, no one even pays attention and if it's like that in japan too with that many uh, that amount of suicides i could see this movie being like the fuck you pay attention right <laughs> or i could be yeah. totally way off from the mark i just could not be farther off the mark like i, I honestly don't know so let's call up Sion Sano and ask. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I've got this number on my phone. It's a, a terrible carrier prices, but uh, <clears throat> but no, it, it's a movie that invites that, and it's very interesting watching it from our culture, where, where uh, suicide isn't isn't the problem that it it would be. So we don't have that that touchstone, yeah. Because it's, I mean, it's hush hush here, but we, it also doesn't have the religious ramifications it used to. Uh, right. I think in Catholicism it might still, but oh, it there's not sure a cultural. <laughs> Yeah, there's not still there's not a huge cultural. Um, they largely ignore it here. Yeah, and when it sh- it sh- when it shows up in movies, it barely does. Like that's the thing is we don't have much of it. Yeah, no, that's true. So like, there's so many other things that happen before you even get to the the suicide plot. And I think the first time I saw it recently was um, oh, the one with the bear in the burning pyramid, uh, Midsummer. Oh yeah. Yeah, like that was a pretty epic suicide in the beginning. Like that was very almost Sono esque in its opening scene. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like we're gonna gas the garage and attach a post to our faces in our Hooray! rooms. Like, yeah, like. <laughs> so yeah, no, we just don't deal with it. So to have this is, and it's such an extreme extent. Like the the scene that got me was the high school students jumping off the roof during lunch. Oh my god, that's so They're, rough. Like, we should kill ourselves. Let's just kill ourselves. And they're like, okay, I'm going to kill myself now. It's like, uh, <laughs> I had moments where I was like, should I pause and take a break? This is getting to be a bit much. I, I, there was a moment during that when Chewie and I were watching it where it's like, because uh, the, they all kind of talk about how they're all going to kill themselves. And then it kind of wanes. And then one girl goes like, hey, come watch me kill myself. And everyone's like, yay. And they go to a run to watch her kill herself. She's like, she's not going to do it. I'll do it. No, I'll do it. And then they all fucking jump up on the wall. And... I'm sitting there with Chewie, and she's like, oh, fuck, they're all going to jump. Yeah. And then as soon as she said it, it clicked. For some reason in my head, I'm still like, no, nah, they're not going to. Oh, wait, no. This movie is called Suicide Club. It's about people killing themselves. They are going to jump, and there they all go, except for well, the one kid who didn't want to, the poor guy. Right. Well, and then you're hoping. You're like, the, I think the biggest thing with that scene, why it's the biggest for me out of all of them, is like, you're hoping. And the movie gives you a brief sliver of hope that they'll think the idea is stupid. Move on. Like, yeah. There's a momentary, like, we have some sense with it. And then no. But it bounces. It's like it's like a roller coaster. It's up for a little bit. Oh, they're all going to kill themselves. No, they're not. Phew. Cooler heads. Nope. They're going to kill themselves. Nope. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then when you see them jump, it's just it's horrible. It was horrible to see them jump. It was. Like especially that, the last girl. Like like not nothing that like not like watching a twenty five children kill themselves wasn't horrible in and of itself. But there's something about that last girl. Like all the kids jump, including the kid who was thrown against his will. I'm just going to keep talking about him because I feel bad for that kid. Um. And then all the other students come running upstairs and they're like yelling at her like, no, you, you can't do this. Don't do not do this. And she just looks she's like, no, I have to. We're in a club. And she just jumps backwards off the building. It's just like, holy fuck. This movie's rough. Well, and, and it's what's, what's so – this just stood out to me now talking about it. But what's so odd about this scene, especially with our Western influence, is how many times in a movie have we seen someone like – Stand on the side, on the top of a roof and jump off. Uh, Back to the Future, where you know Marty jumps off and uh, uh, Doc catches him. Yeah. In the, you know, in their future, he jumps off and it tricks him. Yeah. Um, Hawkeye and Avengers, he jumps off the roof, turns around back and shoots his arrow. Like we have a like we know this this shot in culture, our culture. Yeah. Of of an action star jumping off. Um. Uh, the nice guys, right? No, not nice guys. The other guys. Um, yeah, other guys. Yeah, happens. Where, where happens to him like all the, the fucking time. <laughs> right in the beginning, when the, the Rock and oh Samuel L. Jackson, right? No. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They jump. They jump off the roof to make it to their side. Like they're, we're gonna do it, and they die. Yeah. It's like we have it comedic. We have it action. And here, I was just sick to my stomach. 
Like it was that 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 shot composition, that editing that I know is action film. Is yeah. here a horror experience? Yeah, and that's, that's our reaction to that scene is why like when I see this movie like in people's like oh it's one of my favorite horror movies. And that's why I'm like it's not a horror movie. It's a horrible movie. Like it makes you feel awful, but when I think of horror movies, and maybe it's just me and my own branding and definitions that's the problem here, and it's not the movie. But when I think horror films, I think movies that are, you know, they're scary, they're horrifying. It's like, oh my God, how'd that happen? This one's, I guess it's a horror film. I mean, it's a horror film in the same vein that, like, uh, we mentioned last week, I want to say, that Clockwork Orange is a horror film. Like, it's that version of horror film where it's just more like horrifying. But you're not right. going to sit here. Like, if you're a diehard fan of horror, if your favorite movie of all time is The Exorcist or Friday the 13th, something like that, this movie's not for you. Like, like this isn't that style of horror. And that's why like, I always kind of hate how horror gets, like, misused and then kind of, like, shat on at the same time. Because maybe it can be something like this. But at the same time, it just doesn't – I don't know how else to describe it. Because, like, it does have, like, the extreme gore factor. Like, the gore in this movie is goopy, gloppy, Blech. and like it, it's intended to be that way you have where skin fruit roll-ups we talked about earlier um the heads pop literally like balloons under trains again it's just blech. when the people when the kids in the horrifying scene jump off the buildings they pop like balloons um and, and like that's the whole way through but at the same time it's so over the top it still doesn't feel like horror to me it almost feels like a comedic beat like that's why i laughed in the beginning of the film so like this movie does kind of how you mentioned earlier it, it just jumps tone left and right and I got to say it does it pretty well. Like, I actually enjoy what Sansono did with it. I think he did a very good job. Like, the amount of just, like, wow, this guy shows promise in this film is it's impressive. Oh, yeah. No, it's <laughs> – I tell you, we, we, we circle around to that jumping tone thing, but it, you, can't help it, you can't help it with his movies. And any of the movies we've watched so far, like, there's been such tonal, tonal shifts that – But it works. Like, he knows when to do it. Yeah, and to have it, like, we always talk about people in their first movies or their second movies or their beginning of their career and how impressed we are that they have a handle on it so early, and it's no exception here. Yeah. That, like, he can already master tone the, the key, the chief thing that's going to make this thing either work or not work, especially with his subject matter. Through all the movies we've watched so far, he has to be a master of tone. Otherwise, none of what we watch works at all. Like, at all. No, I mean, like, you look on at paper, the... on paper, it almost doesn't. You look at the three movies we've watched this month and like the again on paper and it's like these are the heaviest movies we've watched in like a year. Like, <laughs> like the, the subject matter in each one of these things fucking swinging for the fences. Even last week with Tokyo Tribe, like yeah, it's a ridiculous movie that's all about like, you know, male fragility, but it's done in like such a way of like this isn't this is important. Like this is a major problem. Men being stupid will start wars and kill everyone. This is a major issue. I'm like wow, this, he doesn't pull punches and he swings for the fences every time. It's it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, and man. I say all that going, do I like this movie? Not really. It's not my favorite. I, I don't think I'll go back to it anytime soon. Uh, like I'm not a big fan of the over gore. Sometimes I like it. Like I like it in like more comedic tones. But this one, it's so heavy and like all the the tone jumping, the story, the character jumps. It just doesn't fully connect for me in a way that I really want to revisit. And just that's a skipping the Genesis scene aside. Like that, that, that whole scene was just fucking insanely hard to watch. Um, and that's yeah. saying, like, and it's not done particularly well. Like you can sit there watching the movie going, like, okay, I, I know both the people in that sack are barely even remotely near each other, but you know what the movie's trying to do. So it's still like, okay, so it helps that I can look at the sack and go, like, oh, the, those two actors are eventually playing cards in there until the scene's over. But you still know what the what's happening in the world of the movie, and it's like okay, it's still hard to watch. Yeah, and it and, did it did cushion the blow a little bit though. Right. Yeah. No, and that's the thing about this one is, would we recommend it as a as a, an initial experience to get a, a baseline? Oh well, yeah, probably sure. But then, like, you compare that to something that we all like, all of us on the ATH series of podcasts probably universally love. Uh, Why don't you play in hell? Yeah. Like, there's there's more blood in that, and there's a lot of violence all kinds and it kind of is a synthesis of everything but like much further in his career and much more assured in the message like this one i don't want to say it doesn't have a message but it doesn't have the punchline that that, that nearly the other ones do and 
Yeah, so it's why we're not connecting as much, I think. Yeah, and I will throw out the, the possibility that maybe we're not connecting or maybe we're missing the punchline just because we're not of the culture. That, that is a very real possibility. Yeah. There could be something huge here that just goes right over our heads. But for me, for my money, I have a feeling this thing really, really grabbed an audience in the West because it's super fucking violent. Um and that's what people got into because that, that you're especially in the early 2000s, that sort of time like that. Yeah, people like their uber violence. And this one doesn't shy away from that. It was bleak, uber violent. Like there was a big audience for that, especially in the early 2000s. That just isn't quite there anymore. Um, for better or worse. Yeah, no, our, our where we are as a people right now in 2021 is very different. Yeah. Than the audience that was watching this when it came out in the festival circuit and as it leaked over into the West, you know, yeah. like, like I could see in 2000. Yeah. During that time, I would have been all over it. Like I said, cause it would have been so edgy, so dark, so violent and so angry that like, I, I would have just uh, attached to it. Yeah. That's why I'm always so surprised that I, I wasn't like, it just didn't, when I watched it in high school, it did so little for me that I basically forgot it existed for a very <laughs> long time. And now I'm glad that I saw it. Like, I'm definitely glad that I, like I, I gave it another shot. I sat through it. Um, but kind of to your point of like, would I recommend it to somebody? If you're a big Sion Sono fan and you've seen all of his stuff, like all the stuff we've talked about, maybe his hate trilogy, maybe some of the other stuff and you really like it and you want to see where he came from, like where this version of Sion Sono came from. Yeah. Check it out. Like, that's really what got him the money and the notoriety to do what he's doing now, at least from what I can understand. Maybe I'm way off. Maybe there's a different movie that like, just didn't make it over here that did it for him. But from what little research I could do, this was like his big meal bringer. And, uh, yeah, if you're interested, it's kind of like a, it's like a history lesson of like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see where that started. Oh, okay, I can see where that started. Oh, I'm glad he stopped doing that thing right there. Like, it's kind of – it's more academic than entertainment. To me at this point. Yeah. And weirdly, I would almost suggest, like, which makes it unfortunate that, you know, the only way it can be watched right now is SD on Amazon, you know, streaming, that this would be a great, A, festival film, like it was, but yeah. also a rep cinema thing in a dark, kind of older rep theater with a bunch of other film fans who are looking for something obscure and old, older, yeah. and looking for something that's just of a more unfettered time, I guess, in terms of expression. Like you, you want to go down to the Arrow for a midnight screening of a 35 millimeter <laughs> print? This would be fucking perfect. Like this would be a really yeah. fun one for a big group of people because when those big splattery things happen, you're gonna get a huge reaction out of a crowd. When you get to the mom who's killing herself by slowly cutting off her arm, oh god, you're gonna get a big reaction because that scene, yep. like that, got a reaction from me. And like the skin fruit roll up got a reaction. The arm cut off got a reaction. A lot of things did, but with the arm cut off got like fucking stop. Like, ugh. It yeah, kept... no, it, it kept going. It kept going and it kept going. And like props ugh. because any any anyone editing that from our sensibility would have been like, okay, you can take thirty seconds out right there. Yeah, you can take five minutes. Hint out. at it. God and, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Hint at it and be done. Like. Show more of the person who stuck their head in the oven. That's fine. But the hand with the bread or the meat or whatever that they were cutting, it's like, it was just so much. Oh. And to have the kid watch it too. Like talk about knowing when to hit you in the, the gut. Yeah. The kid watches his mom slowly cut her <coughs> hand off and then runs <coughs> to the other room and goes, mommy's <coughs> silly. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Y yes, she is. <laughs> and then just to continue watching TV. Like, I mean, I guess, wow, what an indictment there, but yeah, geez. <laughs> This movie, this movie takes every shot it can. Yeah, no. By the end, you feel like you're you're a, a pincushion, yeah, uh, of emotion and experience because this thing was. I'm, we're gonna stab you. Yeah. Eight ways to Sunday. <laughs> My God. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a this oh. been a brutal month. <laughs> <laughs> Almost need something like light and fluffy after, like uh, <laughs> well, Studio Ghibli, right? <laughs> well. I say Man. that I say light and fluffy with a bit of a wink. I was gonna say, uh, <laughs> uh, sure. <Yeah. laughs> it looks light and fluffy. Yeah, yeah. No, I want I want to be like, oh, cry. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. Why am I so sad now? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, 
what have we missed? Is there anything that you and I haven't really, uh, really hit on this thing yet? Or do you think we, we've pretty much touched everything we can? Um, as far as like theme and, and filmmaking, no, but I do want to call attention to the scene where the girl who doesn't kill herself at the end, we're introduced to her when her boyfriend, uh, suicides on top of her. Like he oh, just yeah. jumps from the roof and lands on her body. And, uh, we stay on a shot of him shaking on the ground for a while, a, a while, another, yeah, just yet another, at this point, it's just like yet another scene to yeah. bother you, <laughs> but such an, this movie is almost a bunch of scarring openings just stacked in a row. Yeah. You can all, it's like, you could use each one of these, one of these for each movie he's ever done, you know, but he's still like, uh, I think I'm just blown away, uh, out of like, I'm not, I'm not speechless because we've been talking about it for a little while, yeah. but <laughs> the, I feel paused, contemplative. Yeah. It's, it's very disarming. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I, God, like there's so many of these scenes I'd forgotten that one. Like I'd forgotten, like, oh yeah, he lands on her ear and her ear just starts shooting blood out. <laughs> yeah, and then she goes into a restaurant. The first thing she goes into a, into a cafe and orders like what a coffee or something. Yeah. And I'm like, well, geez, like, the guy just called the ho- a- he just called an ambulance. You should probably wait for it. Like it's definitely showing up for your boyfriend, but you're shooting blood out of your ear. Hang out. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else that, that we that we should call attention to before we get into the end of this thing. Like that scene was rough. Um, we didn't really talk. I guess we should just spend a minute talking about the, the the theater. Like the theater is really where I feel like the movie shows its cards, and it shows its hand. And it turns out it was playing a different game. Like I don't understand the scene really at all in context of the film. Like I don't know who these kids are. I don't know what power they have. Oh. I didn't yeah. really get it. That, that that scene just kind of flew over my head. And I've watched it now three times. I've gone back and rewatched that scene. Like, what did I miss? And I've gotten I I didn't miss anything. I don't I don't think it makes sense. I don't yeah, think it's supposed uh, to make sense. The, yeah, the the best I can describe it, and and you know, maybe someone a little bit more savvy could point out the connection that maybe I missed or that we missed. But it just seemed like a this is here because it's here, and it's. Let, let, making a search for some meaning some mystery to solve that uh, no it's not real like it, it's that seemed to be the most least probable thing in this which should maybe yeah. tell us something that's the only thing i can pull from it is like hey this is where this gets a little bit weird and nonsensical so it, maybe it's also not true like maybe her looking at the camera at the end is like what are you what are you expecting something mystical like children cult like uh or maybe not maybe this Maybe I got you. You know, I mean, that very well could be. I mean, the whole thing is there is no suicide club. Like people are just doing this and looking for meaning in it is stupid. Like basically, it's like looking for meaning in this is stupid. Just love yourself. Just love yourself and be fine. Right. Even even down to the, the questions that the kids are asking, I had a lot of like difficulty parsing it because it was like, <laughs> are you connected to yourself? Are you attached to yourself? Like these questions that aren't real questions. Like I get, like, you can infer the meaning what they're trying to go for, but like they're yeah, like, asked I could... in such a very nonsensical way, in a very tautological way. Like, <laughs> are you yourself? Like, yes, I'm me. Yeah, it's like I get it. You're you're a fucking undergrad philosophy major. Cool. Like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm right there with you. But at the same time, I I think you're right. Like, you can infer what they're asking. Like, clearly, it's like. Do, would you mourn yourself if you died? Like, okay, I guess, you know, live for yourself as well as others. It sounds like a good message, I guess. But they don't really ever fully stick that landing either. So yeah. maybe it is just that. Maybe you're right. And it's just like, no, looking for meaning in this is pointless. Stop doing that. Yeah, it's almost it's almost like a weird, I don't know, game or bait and switch. It's like, I'm going to put this in here to make you do it, but I'm also going to condemn you for trying to follow that thread. <laughs> Sort of like a kind of a gotcha in, in, in film form. Yeah. Like, I don't know how I feel about it because I, I don't encounter it that much outside of <laughs> Sion Sono anything. But maybe that's what the why people like it. Like it's kind of like you when you go through a puzzle and you see the solution, you go back and like, oh, here's all the hints. Here's everything that told me like, oh, I was really, I shouldn't have followed this. Like maybe this red herring is a, you know, haha, punch you in the face. It's very possible. <laughs> I, I, I... 
I'm just I kind of at a loss, and uh, I, I mean that in a good way. So like I, I'm not following Sion Sano's wish of hating the movie. I guess I'm sorry. Um, not really though. Uh, <laughs> I, I I didn't think it was that bad. I just didn't think it was you know. It wasn't exactly what I thought it would be on my rewatch. It wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be, but it definitely was very much its own thing, and I can appreciate it for that. Right? Yeah. Yeah, but we would we would we would definitely like give caveats when someone talking to someone about it. I, I like we wouldn't necessarily even recommend it. It'd be like it's there. You can watch it just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going in expecting yeah. another, why don't we play in hell? Stop. Yeah, yeah that, that's uh, not this one. If you're uh, expecting the kind of the shock and awe, but h- kind of the humorous punchline of Tokyo Tribe, eh, no, no, like dial it back and get ready to be kind of horrified <laughs> and scratching your head at the same time. And and I will say this: there is a sequel to this movie, and I'm very curious to watch it. I want to see what it is, and I I do think it's available as well. Um, I think it's on Prime. Uh, it's called Noriko's Dinner Table, and I hear uh, I hear it answers a lot of the questions that you're left with at the end of this film. So maybe uh, maybe we should give it a shot. Huh? Well, uh, I, I just I just followed the link, and I'm like, oh, it's also by him. Yeah, also written directed by him. So may, maybe we should give that one a shot. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we we'll talk. Maybe this might be a five week month. Who knows? Who, yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows? We're definitely going to take a break from next week, though. <laughs> I can't, can't watch two of these fucking things back to back. Right. Um, all right. With that, I, th- I think we've pretty much covered everything we can in this thing. I think we should uh, should move on to favorite moments? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> it's hard to say favorite. Yeah, favorite? like maybe impactful, but even that's even that's a bad joke too. Yeah. So maybe uh, in moments that struck us. Now that's also got to start using violent <laughs> yeah. comparisons uh, here stood out there we go this there movie you. stands out but what on moment stands out the most d- d- does it stand oh. on a- <laughs> uh, yeah okay any one of those Pick. <laughs> uh so i'm gonna go with the, the reveal of the skin roll like <sighs> uh, it's, it's far and away my favorite thing uh as far as like holy fuck things go that i i think i've seen this month now nah, human hole will still win human hole will always win um <laughs> <laughs> yes but in as far as things that are like official on our on our yes, docket, exactly. Uh, official on our docket, I I think as far as like just visually disgusting, scarring things, that is high up in my list of like just awful things I've had to see in movies. Uh, so it might not be my favorite thing in the moment, but it's definitely the thing I'm gonna remember the longest. So, skin roll. Uh, uh, Sorry, skin fruit roll up. How dare I? Fruit roll up or the the. What is that gum that's in the little that little dispenser? Skin by the foot. <laughs> Skin by the foot. Oh. Even worse. I, I think Ugh. I've just disgusted myself even yep. further. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Um, eh, we mentioned it before, but for me, the standout is the kids on the, the high school children on the roof jumping off, and the thing that makes it stand out like there's a whole all of it's horrible to watch for me, but seeing them splat on the ground from inside the classroom oh <laughs> getting to see them fall and splat like there's a punctuation in each of those that is just sickening to the level to me that the skin roll is yeah i can see that for sure oh, ugh. <laughs> yep especially since you don't want you don't want that last one to happen you don't want to see the fall of the last one especially since you got to see her foot get near the ledge and her like uh, I don't know. And you're like, don't. And then you do. Yep. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It happened. And then, yeah. And then to put salt on the wound, you get to see one of the kid's ears get brushed off the windowsill. Because clearly their head connected before it hit the ground. Yeah, of course. If, because why not? <laughs> and just the way the cop does it. Ear coming down. Yeah, Oof. my reaction was the reaction of the crowd down there. Like, ah! I did like the one cop who's like, dude. Come on. <laughs> Gross. It's like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. All right. Double features. Uh, <laughs> double features with this one. <laughs> God damn. Um, fuck, I'm going with the Lego movie. 
<laughs> and, and I totally mean it. Uh, I, I say watch Suicide Club first, and you're going to feel a little down. And then Lego Movie is going to bring you right back up. Um it might okay. also make you. Uh, it might also fuck with your head a little bit and make you like try to pull out things in the Lego Movie that aren't there. And uh, I, I think that'd be kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Go from everything is horrible to everything is awesome. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I can I can vibe with that. <laughs> that's a that's a good note. Um, I'm gonna go the easy way out and um, go with what I mentioned earlier. Uh, was, we need to talk about Kevin, and it's not a style thing because the filmmaker for that didn't do style in the way that Sion Sona does. So that's mm-hmm. not the comparison point. The comparison point is what we talked about earlier, the cultural pinpoint of the things that matter to us versus them, suicide, gun violence. Yeah. And I think I felt just as sick in that movie at multiple points as I did here. And it, it all and, and the filmmaking tech, uh, the filmmaking methods couldn't have been farther from each other. No. <laughs> I, but I still felt the same. And I was never bored in Suicide Club. We need to talk about Kevin is a slow burn. It is. It's completely <laughs> the opposite. But then to be able to have that same feeling and yeah. recognize that, oh, I feel sick to my stomach. Yeah, I feel in awful each one of right these. Now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So those are some wonderful double features that I expect everyone to do. <laughs> <laughs> God. I, I, if, 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 if you folks out there have done any of the double features we've suggested, uh, I do. We, for science, we should find out what happens. Yeah. We would like to know the results of these tests because, especially with the past couple recommendations I've made that have been like <laughs> jarring, and to and the, you know, how do you feel? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel after watching Suicide Club in the Lego Movie? <laughs> yeah. Did Did it work? Did it bring you up? Did it just make you hate the Lego Movie now? <laughs> yeah. Is the roller coaster a you know a pain on your stomach? Is it, uh, did it, did it help? Was it just what the doctor ordered? I get, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone actually does it. Um, all right. I, I think I, I don't think I can talk about Suicide Club anymore without, without feeling really, really sad about myself. So I think we should probably move into the end of this thing. Um, I will look into Noriko's dinner table and if we can find it, we will add a week onto this month and we'll, uh, we'll do that. And then, I. Uh, but either way, we should probably tease what next month is going to be. Because as of right this now, this moment, this is our penultimate episode of the month, which is when I like to announce next month. And next Ooh. month, oh boy, I'm excited for next month. Uh, we're, we're staying in Japan, and we're going to do Toho Godzilla movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got to celebrate Godzilla versus Kong or Kong versus Godzilla or whatever the fuck they're calling that thing. Uh, and we're going to pick out four random of the Toho Godzilla films. Uh, we've already been kind of slowly picking, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Chewie is really ramped up for it. She's picked her favorite already, uh, which is either Son of Godzilla or Godzilla versus King Kong. And I don't I honestly don't remember at this point. But those are her two favorites. So she's really excited about watching one or both of those. Uh, and then I, <laughs> I'm i leaning towards one of the big all-out brawl ones because that's kind of where my head goes because it's more like Power Rangers. Um, and then, John, I don't remember where you were going, but I think you're kind of going the fun realm as well, right? Yeah, I was trying to go the fun realm because, uh, I, you know, as part of film school and just film history, I know the original, like the main one. Yeah. And then kind of osmosis the other ones. And I've always had Godzilla toys, so I've always seen these things. So I'm try- I might go for the fun one just because – I'm a little unversed. Okay. Well, this would be a, little, a good way to do it. A little blind spotty. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you'll do a, like Mecha Godzilla or something like that. Just something kind of a little loony. Yeah. Either either uh, Mecha or Cheetah. Uh, oh, there you I go. I haven't decided. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll let you know next week if there will be another week of Sion Sono or if we're diving into Toho Godzilla. But either way, the Godzilla movie will be. The Godzilla month will start by the time Godzilla hits HBO Max. That's our goal. So you can at least, right. you know, we'll we'll be in the right <laughs> mind frame by the time the movies start. We'll be done. And with you know what? Depressing ourselves with Sion Sono. <laughs> we might find out that next week's movie afterwards, we're just like, you know what? It's time to take a breather. Time yeah. for some uh, monster, like kaiju monster yeah. action for a yeah. while, just to take a breather. Yeah. Are you guys ready to dive back into the world of Suicide Club? No. Okay. Let's go to Toho. <laughs> right. I, we'll I can imagine that being a conversation yeah. that you and I have over chat. Uh, yeah. Next next week or something. It's like, Could, do you really feel like the next one? Yeah. We'll we'll see because I'm very curious about a sequel to Suicide Club. It might have to come after Toho. We'll see. We'll see. 
I let's do a very very quick round of plugs and we can say goodbye. I uh, for me, be sure to check out uh, every Monday Binge Buddies. We're still doing uh, Alice in Zombieland right now. That's all the Resident Evil films, and it's been a blast. Uh, John, what about you? Uh, Demon Days. Uh, we're we're not quite to the back to weekly schedule yet. Uh, the last episode dropped uh, last week. Uh, I think sometime in the beginning of March, those will cut through. It's just we're recording this weekend to get more episodes, and then yeah, we'll be back to weekly. And I'm excited to get back into it because during this big break, it's uh, not been a lot of D and D in my life. And yeah. having started it back up again, you know, I have missed it. There is something to it. So yeah, it's what the doctor ordered for me, at least. <laughs> Distance makes the heart grow fonder. Yes. <laughs> but also, it, it is um, an interesting challenge to do D and D in the online space. Uh, just. Being used to being at a table only, you know, game yeah. nights and all that. It's just like, it'll, even though I've been doing, we've been doing it online for, oh gosh, about a year now. Yeah. It does not feel the same. I'm not used to it. I, I don't think I ever could get used to it. I, I'm not a big D&D guy already. I like D&D, um, but I don't think I get used to playing on a computer. Like, there's something about being in the room that is very important. But the fact that you guys do it and you do it so well is, you know, hats off. Those episodes yeah. are a lot of fun to listen to. Well, we certainly try. It is, we're, get, we're getting used to it in the, in the technical sense, but as far as, like, I keep telling my chat, uh, my uh, the DM Days crew in chat, like, I miss your guys' faces. <laughs> like. Yeah. I think I just miss faces in general, right? Yeah, no, without the without the podcast or uh, Facebook, I think everyone onli- online would be an abstract thought. Yep. <laughs> and that's, uh, and I got to fight that because it's like, well, how do I know that you're real? You don't. You don't, I only talk to you over the airwaves, over the internet. I see pictures, but is that real? Spoilers Does for Burbank next really exist? No, it doesn't, and I make believe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, I think that's everything, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. Thank we you, everyone, it. so much for listening. Tune in next week for Guilty of Romance, and uh, bye. 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 Mail me.